Signs for the Blind, Part 3, Selfish Assurance. Will you please listen? Where are you going? Nothing was happening. We were just lying there. Under the damn covers? Come on, please. She wiped her face and changed her clothes, talking to herself out loud about him being a fucking faggot. Listen, bitch, you ain't taking nothing out this house. He was furious that he had been busted, but he was even madder that she was packing her things. Tanya continued moving and packing her bag as the thoughts of HIV and AIDS began to sail through her mind like a neon scrolling banner. You better get your fucking hands off me, you nasty ass bastard. I am out of here. Lewis had grabbed her arm, trying to make her stop packing and listen to him, but her voice and expression finally let him know it was to no avail to try and reason with her at that moment. He backed off because he started thinking about how many times she had left him, only to come back. And with this thought, he decided to just back away and let her leave so she could have the opportunity to calm down and come to her senses. He knew damn well she wouldn't stay long at her mother's house where she had been molested by her father as a kid. Her mother resented her for it too, so he knew that although her mother would allow her to stay there for a little while, it wouldn't be for long. The other assurance he had was that she didn't make enough money to get a place of her own. Over the years, he had already convinced her that she was lucky he even wanted her. He never came right out and said those words, but he had found ways to reinforce it in her mind. He felt in control that way. She zipped up her suitcase and walked right out the door, jumped into her car, and drove toward her mother's house. As she was driving, she began to wonder how she had allowed herself to move back in with him after she had left him so many times before. The last time she left was because he had started busting into the bathroom while her 10-year-old daughter was in the bathtub a little too regularly. Her daughter was downright upset about it. She realized she couldn't leave her daughter alone with him. He wasn't her father after all, and she realized that he was being inappropriate. But instead of leaving him right then, she had moved her daughter out, letting her mother keep her. Tanya moved her daughter into the very house that her grandfather, Tanya's father, had molested her when she was a little girl. But her focus had been on herself and her selfish desires not past horrors in regard to her own father's proclivity. She had decided that removing her daughter from the apartment where she and her boyfriend lived was the best option. This way, she could continue living away from her parents, get high when she felt like it, and have her man there with her. Lewis wasn't even working during this time. He had lost his job a few months prior and was collecting unemployment.